Some classic John Lennon there from Imagine, Give Me Some Truth, which is pretty much impossible to come by in in this day and age in in media, in politics, and everywhere. And what's kind of cool is I wasn't wasn't expecting this. I know I mentioned um, earlier that uh, John Ruain, the author and satirist, will be with us in a little while. He's coming uh, in the 1130 hour. We'll also, and I I never even got to say all this, what we're going to be doing on this episode of Dave's Gone By. uh, If we have some time, we'll be playing some mother songs for our Saturday segue in honor of Mother's Day. I'll also be going inside Broadway for some theater reviews from when I was in New York a couple of weeks ago, as well as theater news and uh, some, some fairly big and sad obituaries in theater this week. Doing all that, plus... I'll be playing uh, my visit to the Bob Cudmore Show on WVTL in Rochester, New York. I spoke to him the day that the Tony nominations were announced. And so we've got that whole segment, and I'll be playing that too. Also, we'll do our weekly Bob Dylan segment, Bob Dylan Sooner and Later. The topic will be mothers, of course, again, for Mother's Day. And how can I forget Rabbi Saul Solomon will be here with his rabbinical reflection on well, you know who, and that's what that, I've been talking about, the whole Osama thing and the news, and it just so happens we have here in the studio the new editor of the UNC Mirror, that is the official newspaper of the University of Northern Colorado, in print since 1919, back when this was, you know, as I said, either the normal school or the, the abnormal school. And so, unfortunately, it, go figure, I have this guy on now that the Mirror has ceased publication until August, but what can you do? <laughs> That's right. No way it is. So, so let me make sure I, I, I've got you on the mic there. This is Benjamin Welch, the editor of The Mirror. How are you doing Hello. this morning? I'm doing good. How are you doing, Dave? I'm good. I'm good. So, first of all, happy summer to you. That's you, right. You've done your last issue, right? Your yes, last... yes. Um, finished up with grad issue today, or the other day, and we just handed it out at graduation uh, a couple hours ago. Well, can I get a copy of that? Uh, yeah, I... stop by the office. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, because my picture should be in there. I, I'm, is that the one with a big picture of everybody? It's on the on the uh, Facebook or something. Or Oh, I don't think that's actually in that issue. Was that ever published, or is it just on the... That's actually for our benefit only, really, just oh. for Facebook and for hanging out in the office, yeah. No one gets to see my pretty face. <laughs> oh, well. So Put you on front someday, though. Now, what happened was, and I, I didn't understand how this went, but the transition was you've been kind of the editor for the past three, four weeks, as opposed to transitioning right at the beginning of the school year. Right. Why, why do they do that? Basically, it's just uh, so, the, so the incoming editor can... Um, uh, give the give the new editor some um, guidance and and help them with the uh, production and training and um, things of that nature to just basically incorpor- incorporate them into the new position and uh, give them some time to get ready for it as opposed to throwing them in the fire at the start of a new semester with no assistance. That's cool. I, so, I think, yeah, especially since the old editor might be graduating and gone. Right. So they won't physically be there to help. Right, which yeah. is in most cases. Right. So what what have you learned in the past three four weeks of helming the ship that you either, especially stuff that you didn't expect? My number one thing that I've learned is I'm not as good of a copy editor as I thought I was. Um, oh. edi- editing is a little bit tough, like uh, just grammatical functions, um, things of that nature. I mean, ethics is, isn't so much of a problem for me, but um, when it comes to just conciseness and, and things of that nature, um, I'm, I'm definitely going through a learning curve on that. But I mean, all editors do at the beginning, and I, I think I'll get through it eventually. So uh, that's been a big thing for me. And uh, manage, management skills, I'm definitely learning and, and getting used to that. So I'm kind of rough around the edges right now, I know, but I I like to think I have potential. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's a one-year term, right? And then they cycle every year for... Uh, roughly. It's whenever whenever the editor graduates or leaves, then they have a new one. So I'll be around for a year, probably a year longer than anyone wants me, but <laughs> I'll be here. Oh, man. So, and, and you don't have to work. There's nothing to do over the summer. Am I, am I right? Well, as long as uh, professors don't go around molesting students again, um, hmm. that happened last summer. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty much off I the hook. I think it was two summers ago. That was, was the, the Vance Fulkerson thing. I okay. I remember it well. Uh, right. Because when we had just moved here back in August of 2010, um, was it? Or nine? No, it was 09. Yes. Uh, whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, so, <laughs> so, but at that point, 
what the, do you do special newspapers or you just updated the website? It's just the update website, Facebook. Yeah. Uh, there's no one around to really get stories or interview or even run the even run the production. So yeah. students might be left in the dark unless they check out our website at uncmirror.com. Uncmirror.com. And and it, it, do you, the thing that disappointed me a little bit when I was last at the uh, the mirror was you've got these shelves. And there are mirrors from like nine. There are a couple of books that go back to uh, a couple from the 1960s right. and a couple from the 1980s. And then you have well, the past recent years. Right. Where are the, the archive archives? Where are the mirrors from the 20s, 30s? Are they gone? You can <laughs> you can actually find those at uh, archival services in the Michener Library. Uh, they're in the basement level, and they're actually right now going through the process of putting each um, mirror ep- uh, edition that we've ever had into the um, library website in a database. So hopefully within a reasonable amount of time, we'll both, or everyone will be able to uh, look up that and go through mirrors from whenever, just right at their computer at home. Oh, brilliant. That, that, that would be great, because it was even fun looking at stuff from the 1960s. Right. <laughs> I mean, uh, Phil Oaks coming to play at the un- Union uh, the University Center, Jimmy right. Collins, I mean, people that were like, oh, my God. Oh, yeah. We don't, I don't know why, but we don't get really the stars here that we were getting even back in the 80s. Yeah, I know this year for our uh, summer con- or spring concert, I'm sorry, uh, we had Swayze and Sammy Adams and something like that. I mean, we're not we're not getting the big names and I'm I'm sure for those big names there's universities around the country all fighting for them, but I I think we should be able to yeah. have the resources to get someone a little bit bigger than I mean, it's not Whoever. if UNC in Greeley, Colorado, or, or that Greeley itself was a bigger place in 1984. Exactly. Let alone 1960, and suddenly we're getting, like, oh my God, they're play- they played here? Right. I, I don't, what happened? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's easy to point fingers, and, and that's not something I'm trying to do, definitely, but uh, it's it all comes down to the whoever's um, running it in the you know university program council um, other administrative offices that decide that and, and negotiate the contracts I mean it's all about I suppose who they know and what their resources are so I mean one year we could get really lucky and other years we're stuck with uh, some local band or or whatever but I mean the turnouts for the concerts are never are never horrible so it's students will still want to go regardless. Oh yeah, no. I, this is the other funniest thing I remember now that I was flipping through the pages. It was a, a mirror edition from 1966 or 67, and I remember one issue had this thing where there were a, a article about a sympathy march for the things that were going on in Alabama. Oh right. They were going to have this big march and you know for freedom and for. You know, racial rights and all that. Right. And then the very next issue, it said <laughs> they ended up canceling the sympathy march because only three people showed up. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like, Colorado is so white. <laughs> you know? Well, it, the, the good thing is we've, we've kind of changed that. We have the Martin Luther King march uh, right. every year around that time, and that always has a huge turnout. So I guess we've advanced in that, in that sense. Well, unless you're a pirate radio, but you know, <laughs> just kidding. So a couple of qu- uh, questions. And again, we're, we are talking with Benjamin Welch, the editor of UNC Mirror. Uh, and uncmirror.com. Uh, for, by the way, what's your major? What are you? What? I'm a double major in criminal justice and journalism. Sweet. Yes. Um, which do you think you'll be going into? <laughs> at this at this point, it's hard to say. I might uh, continue into um, graduate school or law school, something of that nature. But right now, it's leaning toward journalism. Really? Yes. Okay. And and print journalism, which. <laughs> Yeah, which may so, still be around when you graduate. Right, so uh, criminal justice. Yeah, right. <laughs> Let me ask two, two questions. How old are you? Roughly? I'm 20. Okay. Where were you, if you remember, on September 11th, 2001? And then where were you five nights ago? In uh, 9-11, originally, um, I, I, I was actually living in Germany. Uh, my dad was in the Air Force. And uh, me and my sister, it was, it was probably three in the afternoon, so... Uh, it was a little bit different in my situation. Me and my sister were just outside, and, and uh, my, my dad actually worked at the Pentagon. We had just moved. Whoa. So uh, my mom came outside and was like, um, you know, there, something happened at the Pentagon and the World Trade Center, and they don't really know what happened yet, but just so you guys know, and we kind of kind of didn't know how to take it, especially since we had just moved from that area, you know, a month ago, not even. Mm-hmm. So that was, that was kind of big news for us. And then uh, a few nights ago, I was – 
trying to write a paper for my final and saw the news come up online. So that, that final didn't get written until the next morning, but, well, yeah. um, it was definitely, definitely came as a shock. I, I never thought after 10 years and I'm, I'm sure most people share the sentiment, but after 10 years, I, I didn't really think that, um, we ever really had much of a chance of finding him. Of course. I, I, I had no hope. Had I, I thought we stopped looking. Yeah, after exactly. The, the first two years of, of Maggie at Bush, it was over that, that, you know, Oh, Public enemy number one is, well, this is not about Osama bin Laden. Right. <laughs> well, no, it's not. Of course not. <laughs> and, but who knew that Obama was still, or at least uh, certainly that the military and, and they were still looking. So um, were you euphoric? Were you just like glued? Were you calling people? Were you, what, what were you doing? I, I'm proud to say I was the first of my friends to put it on Facebook. So, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I was, I was. I wasn't running around the house, you know, jumping for joy or anything, but I was, I was definitely, obviously, uh, proud of the efforts of our military and uh, President Obama and, and, and all those who participated in the raid. And um, I just, I was, I was definitely surprised and definitely happy and, and was, like I said, that final didn't get written or was not written. Yeah, <laughs> I was busy talking to people about the whole situation and trying to find I, out more. I have to say, I felt so bad in a way, for students who had finals on Monday morning. Yeah. Because this, this news broke Sunday night at like 10.30, and right. then you're waiting until 11.30 for Obama. And then after, and of course, and poor people, I could go to sleep and concentrate, you know, get a good night's sleep <laughs> before a final, which is what you're supposed to do. Right. Imagine kids having to get up at 8 o'clock in the morning, and, you know, with all that going on, and then concentrate on whatever the hell else <laughs> right. isn't history, right. you know. And, and something I'd like to ask you as well, yeah. and um, what do you think of uh, the... Uh, I guess I would call them Osama sympathizers in a way, uh, in, in the sense of them saying, "I don't, I don't rejoice that another human being has died, or, or that we shouldn't, we shouldn't make that our goal, or he should have gotten a fair trial, or things of that nature." Um, I know you're talking about uh, how you felt a little while earlier in the show about about that, sure. but I mean, what do you, what do you think of people who are basically feel bad for him? <laughs> You've been reading too much Huffington Post. <laughs> no, I, I don't. I. It's it's interesting, I, and because even my wife and some people I know are along that level, along the lines of there's something a little you you can't quite just jump up and down over the idea of anybody right. being shot in the face and dying. I can, <laughs> but I'm not I'm not a particularly nice person, and so if someone does that to an Osama bin Laden or even a much more minor terrorist, <laughs> and they right. find him. They shoot him in the in the van. Boom, he's gone. How many how many um, Muslim terrorists have we shot in the face in the past nine years in Afghanistan and Pakistan and Iraq, wherever? I'm like, who cares? Yeah. <laughs> okay, they're dead. Fine, good. Yeah, <laughs> we wasted a bullet. I wish I wish you know that bullet the way our military spends was probably eighty dollars. Right. No kidding. So I hope they used one bullet instead of four. Right. Um, I'm not. Worried at all about, as, as I was saying in, in the ramp up to our conversation, was just it bothers me that I'm perhaps being lied to or misinformed or I won't ever hear the real truth. So, what is it? What is so bad about telling me the real truth of what happened? Right. Well, in, I, I don't even think, compound? I don't think anybody even knows at this point. Uh, I, I've heard, you know, everyone's heard multiple stories from people who were supposedly there even. Right. So, and even I heard uh, President Obama was supposedly watching it live from a helmet cam or something like that i don't know if that's true it's what i've heard i've heard there were dogs parachuting in i've heard human shields and firefights and surrendering i've heard everything well, you know what that's like it's like yeah if, if you listen or read the thing suddenly 38 million people were at woodstock yeah exactly <laughs> they were all there they, yeah. knew. They, were, you know, they were in the traffic jam they got there <laughs> meanwhile there were maybe nine hundred thousand people for real at, at in Woodstock when it happened. So now we'll, we'll oh yeah, I was I was right in Pakistan at the time. Yeah, okay, right, fine. I don't. Well, can you? Um, and, and I think even Rabbi Saul Solomon's going to be talking about this in his rabbinical reflection later in, in the program. But you know, on Passover, I don't know how conversant you are with Jewish custom. <laughs> ben, Benjamin West. A little bit. Uh, you've ever been to a seder? I have not. Okay. Well, what what they do is is you have, you drink a lot of wine. During the Seder, drink four oh, cups of Oh, I've been to those. Wine. Yeah, that's why you should go to a Seder. You might enjoy that part. Um, and what they also do, though, is at one point they spill some wine out of the glass. 
Now, yeah. why they do this is because we're not supposed to be completely happy when an enemy suffers uh, during our victory. Okay. We, can't, we, can't, we can be happy that we won, but we shouldn't be so happy that the other person suffered, died, or lost. And again, for me, BS. I, <laughs> my enemy is my enemy. Good. Suffer, die, uh, be eaten by rats and roaches. I don't care. So, but there are people who t- carry that over as a humanistic moral thing of saying, um, you know, the, somebody was killed in a very quick, brutal way. And how can you actually rejoice over that, no matter who he was? Right. I can. Do you have any problem with, let's say he was completely unarmed and helpless? Does that bother you? Well, no, not really. And and people are even saying, you know, there's the whole fair trial thing. There's no way Osama bin Laden could have a fair trial in any country from an impartial jury. It's mm-hmm. It's just impossible. I mean... Honestly, just to end it right there, not use any more of our resources, not use any more of our tax dollars to go through this well, yeah. fair trial, which wouldn't even exist. Um, it, Although, if just... you're saying, I mean, if, you're, if you're talking about specifically morality, and then you're talking about tax dollars connected to morality, then, then already you're on a sort of a slippery, well, you know, it cost us so much money to, to hide him and to put him on trial and the millions and more millions of dollars. I mean, that, that's not a moral thing. Well, that true. That is a treasury thing. Yeah, well, specifically on morals, I've, yeah, I mean, good riddance, I say. <laughs> Indeed. Would it have been nice, though, it, assuming we had the finances and whatever, to have a trial? It would have been interesting. Um, would he deserve it? I don't think so, but I think it would have. It, it would have been kind of like the the Richard Nixon thing back in the seventies, where Ford just pardoned him, so the country wouldn't have to go through uh, feeding off of this story for hmm. who knows how many years. I mean, it might have been a similar thing. I mean, there's no way in hell Obama's going to pardon Bin Laden, <laughs> but uh, just getting rid of him then would have saved everybody. I mean, both in a sense of, in, in lives, I mean, who knows what else he would have done, but also oh, yeah. in the sense of just our attentions. And remember that, that who was it, Al-Zahiri, Zoa, whatever happened to him? He was that guy who looked, that famous picture of him, fat in the undershirt, unshaven. He was also oh, in the right. masterminds. What do we do with him? Did he get a trial? Did we blow his brains? Is he in a prison somewhere? I, I think he's still alive. Um, he's a, see, Although he's not a mastermind the way Bin Laden is. He certainly has evil and has caused as much havoc. Yes. What about him? Well, people don't know who he, who he is. So, I mean, you associate Bin Laden with, you know, 9-11, Al, whoever. I mean, he might, have a, he might stand a better chance of, uh, of maybe not necessarily a fair trial, but of not, not taking all of our attention span and our resources um, towards his trial because nobody knows who he is. What are your thoughts on Gitmo? Um, I honestly I don't mind it. Like they, the people who are there for the most part have done horrible things. We're planning to do horrible things. I mean, as citizens, we can't be a hundred percent or hundred percent sure of what our troops are doing to them. But as long as it's not completely barbaric, I think think they have what they have what they have coming to them. Hmm. So. I kind of feel that way about kids who get C's. <laughs> <laughs> UNC. And they're all there in uh, Nottingham Field right now. That's right. That's, that's where the, the graduations are happening. Oh, as we speak, it's 1042 in the morning here at UNC Radio. I've been talking to Benjamin Welch, the editor of the UNC Mirror. What are the, last question for, for Benjamin. What are some of the things that you're looking forward to in your next year? I guess you start up in August or, or in September. When is it? When we'll start up again? Uh, we'll start publication the first day that uh, classes are. That'll be, I think, Monday, August 23rd, 24th, um, mm-hmm. some, sometime in then, and uh, publish three days a week on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays throughout the semester. Um, one of the most, uh, one of the things I'm most looking forward to is, is just learning journalism. I mean, right now, it's a really tough profession to get into. Uh, it's changing. Nobody really knows what's going on with it. Um, as readership is shrinking, um, revenue is shrinking. Everything, everything is just transforming to a different kind of media. Um, so you have to be, you have to be your, at your very best if you're going to find uh, anything in this profession. I mean, uh, writers are getting 
laid off right now who have won um, Pulitzer Prizes. The Rocky Mountain News has been shut down recently. Oh, wow. um, so first, first they took the Rocky Mountain shuttle. Now they took away the exactly. Rocky so I mean, Pretty like soon I said, they haul away the Rocky Mountains because they're too expensive to upkeep. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna, gonna move them somewhere into like <laughs> India or Indonesia or China where they can they, they can take the mountains and polish them because people are earning forty cents an hour. I'll, I'll bet you that's next. Okay, well, <laughs> look forward to seeing that, I think. Well, uh, I look forward to seeing the next uh, issue of the UMC Mirror, the first Monday of classes coming in August. And you know, everybody also keep tabs on uncmirror.com just in case we have any more, oh, I don't know, molestation, suicides, <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, anything else that, that goes on here. Yeah, next will probably be... Uh, uh, I won't speculate. Hey, maybe it'll be, it'll be a Pulitzer or something. Yeah. Maybe some, something wonderful. Or they'll, they'll build that bridge from the University <laughs> Center to the gym. The Vandriel Bridge. Vandriel Sky Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. How, why would it be named after either the theater critic from the, uh, the Greeley Trib or his son who is the... Uh, was he he was the student body president student body for president, Student Senate yeah. this year, yes. And uh, he... He's, I mean, he's a great guy, um, great on student senate. I think he's done a lot of good things. Uh, but he, he basically um, built this initiative that would include Skybridge, which is actually an exaggeration of the term. But um, that initiative did not pass oh. in, a, in the popularity polls. And so that may never come to fruition, or we may see a different form of it uh, in the next few years. But um, Oh, so that didn't pass? I, no. I, oh, so... Oh, okay. I was just, I thought it was really going to go through. I mean, it sounds nice in a different economic circumstance to, in miserable weather. You can just, what was it supposed to be from like the UC to where? The new building, the new academic building they were going to build on the other side of campus. Did that go through? Uh, no, it, it was a, it was a group, um, group project. And, uh, it, it still might go through as, um, the board of trustees will still look at it. Uh, it was basically the initiative was an opinion poll, um, from the students. Oh to yeah. decide, you know, what do the students want, but, um... All I want is an Indian restaurant. Just build a bloody Indian <laughs> restaurant on or near campus so you don't have to go to Fort Collins to get decent Indian food. You know, that would be nice. You, you, you can actually uh, make your own proposal for that, so see, see how that goes in the next elections. Might be a popular thing. Hmm. I will take that under advisement. Benjamin Welch, I want to thank you so much uh, for stopping into the neighborhood and talking news and the UNC Mirror and, and all that kind of stuff. I wish you a wonderful summer and then great news in the year ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to thank you for having me and good summer to you too.